Should you use full frame lenses on your crop bodies? This is something that I first addressed in 2014 and that first video generally still holds up, but I wanted to circle back, look at some actual example pictures to really drive this point home, as well as answer some additional questions. First up, if you're not totally familiar with how sensor sizes impact the images that you get out of your camera, check out this link, sdp.io slash crop. We have a lot of written information and a couple of videos that'll make it easy for you to understand. It's a really common point of confusion. I see people all the time using full frame lenses on crop bodies and even using crop lenses on full frame bodies. Manufacturers aren't great at this distinguishing which lenses are designed for which bodies. So they get mismatched a lot and they kind of work well enough that a lot of people don't notice right away, but matching them appropriately and picking the ideal lens will often save you thousands of dollars and produce better results. So let's look at the real details of it. The first question up, are full frame lenses sharper on crop bodies. Full frame lenses are designed for large sensors and many cameras have smaller sensors. You can attach those full frame lenses to the cameras with the smaller sensors. Some people believe the camera with the smaller sensor will produce sharper results. This is because lenses tend to be sharpest in the center of the lens. So let's not debate it theoretically. Let's actually get practical and look at some sample pictures that I've taken using the same lens on both a full frame body and an APS-C body. The first example is a Sony a7 Mark III, which has a 24 megapixel sensor with an anti-aliasing filter with the very sharp 16-35 f2.8. I will use the same lens with the Sony a6600, which has a very similar sensor but is smaller. I'm going to adjust the focal length so that we get the same angle of view. Let's go into Lightroom. The Sony a6600, the APS-C camera is on the left and it's at 24 millimeters. To get the same angle of view, I used a Sony a7 Mark III, a full frame camera, and set the focal length to 35 millimeters. You can see they produce about the same picture. Let's zoom in to check the details and I'll go right to the edge here where the APS-C camera in theory should be sharper. What we actually see is that the full frame camera is significantly sharper. And this is with a very sharp lens, we would see more drastic results with a less sharp lens. Why does this happen? Why don't we get sharper images from the center of the lens? It's true the center of the lens is sharper, and that does work in the favor of APS-C cameras. But when you put a full frame lens on an APS-C body, you're capturing less than half the detail that lens is producing. Therefore, if you put that same full frame lens on a full frame body, it will be capturing more than twice the detail. Let's take a look at an example with a less sharp lens, the Sony 24 to 105 f4. Still a good lens, but not quite as sharp. Again, you can see I adjusted the focal length to get a similar angle of view from both cameras. Zooming in, we see quite a bit more detail out of the full frame camera, despite it having a similar anti-aliasing filter and similar megapixels. In both cases, the full frame camera was sharper than the APS-C camera, but it wasn't a huge difference and you could be happy with both sets of results. And that's kind of why a lot of people who are using full frame lenses on their APS-C cameras are saying, whoa, it's nonsense that I should try to use an APS-C lens. I'm happy with my results. They're very sharp. That's good. You definitely can get sharp results that you can be happy with, but academically, you would get sharper results if you were to attach that same lens to a full frame camera. DxO Mark did a lot of testing of different cameras and they do things very objectively and in a very controlled way. So examples from my original video, a 5D Mark III with the Canon 24 to 70 F2.8 had a perceptual megapixel rating of 14 perceptual megapixels. DxO Mark has a process to determine the amount of megapixels that you actually see in an image, which is a really useful way to determine the actual viewable detail that you get from any given combination of camera plus lens. With the same lens on a Canon 7D, which has a similar APS-C sensor, the resolution dropped to only seven megapixels. Now this old lens is not particularly sharp and that's why you see such a drastic difference. If you were to put an optically perfect lens on there, you would get the exact same result. Therefore, using extremely sharp glass on APS-C lenses will still produce good results. Using unsharp lenses will produce less satisfactory results and you would see a 
bigger difference upgrading to a full frame body. Again, using DxO Mark's objective measurements as a second point of reference, in addition to my own testing, comparing the D610 full frame camera with the APS-C D7100, we see 13 megapixels versus nine megapixels. So in summary, are full frame lenses sharper on crop bodies than they are on full frame bodies? The answer is no, but depending on the lens, there could be a substantial difference or a very minor difference. And as lenses approach optical perfection, the difference that you would see in those bodies will be less and less. I want to say that this is really hard to test. At one point, I reached out to the general public to take sample pictures for me. And when I reviewed everybody's results, I literally had to discard every single image that was sent to me because nobody did it in a carefully controlled enough way. So as you're doing your own tests and trying to replicate this, you might really struggle with it. The biggest problem I found was focusing variations. It can actually be very difficult to get two cameras to focus on precisely the same part of a scene. So in some cases, one camera would seem sharper than the other, but they didn't focus on the same part of the scene and I had to discard the results. Performing this test also requires you to match the angle of view between two cameras with different size sensors. And that requires you to either change the distance to the subject or to zoom the lens. You can see I chose to zoom the lens. If you do that, though, it gets complex because some zoom lenses are not the same sharpness throughout the zoom range. Most notably, a lot of zoom lenses tend to become less sharp when they're zoomed out to one extreme, and that can alter your results because with the full frame camera, you would be zooming in all the way, whereas with the APS-C camera, you'd be at a wider focal length, and thus the lens might be a little bit sharper there. The other option is to change your position to step back with the APS-C APS-C camera to achieve the same subject size. If you do that first, it's not replicating the real world because you don't always get to move, but you would also be changing the background by basically having a narrower angle of view that captures less of the background. And basically you're just taking a completely different picture. And then why would you bother to compare two completely different pictures? You would also get different depths of field when comparing an APS-C camera to a full frame camera. Therefore, the most useful results would be by achieving equivalent f-stop numbers, basically by raising the f-stop on the full frame camera by a stop. And then you get a bunch of people saying, okay, but the lens is sharper if I raise the f-stop number because you're closer to its sweet spot. But if you don't do that, you might be comparing different parts of the picture that are not at precisely the focal plane. And thus the difference in the depth of field would be the primary factor in determining the difference in sharpness. Different camera bodies, also have different amounts of megapixels. So you wouldn't want to compare a 30 megapixel full frame camera to a 24 megapixel APS-C camera or vice versa. Different cameras have different AA filters too. For example, the 20 megapixel D5 from Nikon has a heavy AA filter and the 20 megapixel D500 from Nikon is an APS-C camera, but it does not have an AA filter. And that AA filter makes a big difference in the sharpness. And if you were to compare those two, you'd actually get sharper results out of the D500 not because the smaller sensor produces sharper results, but because the lack of an AA filter makes that big of a difference. It's kind of complex stuff. Next question, are pro full frame lenses better than APS-C lenses? Let's look at some examples again. Let's take a look at the professional grade Sony 16 to 35 F2.8. This is a G master lens at $2,200. Let's compare it to the regular G lens, the Sony 16 to 55 F2.8, which is designed for APS-C cameras. I'm putting both of these on a Sony A6600 and a APS-C camera. On the left, we have the non-professional G lens, and on the right, we have the professional grade GM lens. This is the more expensive lens on the right. Let's zoom in to four to one. And what we see here are uncannily similar results. Looking closer to the edge of the frame, I can see distinctly more detail out of the APS-C non-professional lens than I do out of the professional grade full frame lens. And that's because the APS-C lens was designed to use just the image circle of the APS-C camera. No detail is being lost. In general, you're better off by using a lens that's optimized for your sensor size. The 16 to 55 F2.8 G lens is also less expensive and lighter weight. So if you're in the position of choosing between a full frame lens or an APS-C lens, they have the same aperture and such. Pick the APS-C lens for your APS-C camera 
whenever possible. If you look at a third party source like DxOMark just as a second opinion, you can see their data backs this up. In this example here, using an APS-C body with a professional grade full frame lens produced a seven perceptual megapixel image using just a cheap kit lens produced an eight perceptual megapixel image. Neither one is particularly good, but you get more for your money out of the APS-C lens and it's smaller. So to answer the question, are pro full frame lenses better than APS-C lenses? The answer is no, usually. You're kind of in a conundrum because there are not always professional grade APS-C lenses for you to choose from. If you're in the Canon APS-C world, like maybe you have a Canon M mirrorless body and you want an F 2.8 zoom, they don't make one for APS-C lenses. So you would be forced to adapt a full frame DSLR lens, for example, and that's less than ideal. But what else are you going to do? The same applies if you have a Nikon APS-C body like a D5600. There are no professional grade APS-C lenses for them, there's an exception to this. Sigma makes a couple of professional grade APS-C zoom lenses, the 18 to 35 and 50 to 100 F1.8. And we previously recommended these because they produce very sharp results under controlled conditions. But in further real world usage, we have stopped recommending them because of consistent focusing problems on just about any camera, Canon, Nikon, Sony, anything. Everybody complains of focusing problems. And we ourselves had pictures, just a lot of important pictures to us ruined because the cameras would say things were in focus, but they just weren't in focus. We went through the process of focus calibration and working with Sigma, and we were never able to get those lenses to work reliably on any body. So we only now recommend them for people who are manually focusing. For example, if they're using video, we still use those lenses for video because they are very sharp, but we never rely on autofocus with them. So what about putting APS-C lenses designed for crop sensor bodies onto full frame bodies? Some people do this accidentally. Other people do it deliberately because they upgrade from an APS-C body to a full frame body and they keep wanting to use the same lenses. Generally, yeah, you can put an APS-C lens on your full frame body and everything will work as expected if you're using a Sony or Nikon body. If you're using a Canon body, you usually won't physically be able to attach the lens unless it's a third party lens. However, you might notice that the megapixels drop substantially. Most people assume that you would divide the number of megapixels in your camera by the crop factor, but you need to divide the megapixels by the crop factor squared. Remember the crop factor is a linear diagonal measurement and megapixels are a two dimensional unit. So you need to square it to convert it properly. For example, if you have a 24 megapixel full frame camera, you put an APS-C lens on it, you will be producing 10 megapixel images. A 45 megapixel full frame body with an APS-C lens will produce 20 megapixel images and a 60 megapixel full frame body will produce 26 megapixel images. This is kind of interesting because if you have a 60 megapixel Sony a7 Mark IV, you can use your APS-C lenses and still get results about as sharp as an APS-C camera. Of course, it's way more expensive <laughs> than just an APS-C camera, but for things like wildlife, it's kind of interesting to know that. We'll talk about wildlife in just a second. First, let's look at examples of full frame bodies with APS-C lenses attached. For example, here's the full frame Sony a7 Mark III with the APS-C 16 to 55 f2.8. Normally, if you were to attach that lens to the body, you would not notice any difference at all because the body would detect it was an APS-C lens, automatically crop everything and show you the cropped image in the viewfinder. If you manually set it to not crop and capture the full image, what you'll see is sort of the image circle as captured by the lens and basically what we'd call heavy vignetting. The corners are very, very dark. The amount of vignetting you get will really vary. For example, this image was at 16 millimeters, but if I zoom into 55 millimeters, the vignetting is substantially reduced. Attaching the APS-C 18 to 105 f4 lens to a full frame body, we can see at the wide side at 18 millimeters, there is heavy vignetting. But as we continue to zoom in, the vignetting disappears to the point where when we're at 105 millimeters, it's almost completely gone. At the long end of some of these APS-C lenses, they almost act like full frame lenses. Next question, should you use crop bodies for wildlife? Wildlife is a different scenario because we can almost never get close enough to our subjects. We almost always have to use a big telephoto lens, but then also crop the image anyway. So if you're going to crop, why not use a crop 
body. Let's take a look at an actual example. I couldn't fit a wildlife lens into my studio, so we're only at 70 millimeters, but the example is sufficient. We can see at 70 millimeters on both cameras, the APS-C body it shows a significantly tighter angle of view. Look how much of this end you can see with the APS-C body versus this. If we were to crop the center of the full frame image, we would produce basically the same angle of view as the crop sensor. Pretty straightforward, right? But this is a wildlife scenario where we would have to crop. So let's zoom in and see which of these two cameras is producing more detail. Looking at the detail in the lettering and on the binding of the book, we're seeing significantly more detail out of the APS-C Sony A6600. That happens because when we crop to match the angle of view of the APS-C camera, the 24 megapixel A7 Mark III is now only 10 megapixels. But at that crop, the A6600 is still a full 24 megapixels. So basically, the APS-C camera has a higher pixel density. It's producing an image that would be more equivalent to like a 60 megapixel full frame camera. So if you're given the choice between shooting wildlife with a 24 megapixel full frame body or a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, me, I would pick the 24 megapixel APS-C camera knowing I'd have to crop. When I'm given the choice between a 24 megapixel APS-C camera or a 60 megapixel full frame body, I prefer the higher megapixel full frame body because I get a wider angle of view that allows me to better track wildlife through the telephoto lens. And in those situations where I can get close enough that I don't have to crop, I can capture that full 60 megapixels worth of detail. So do crop bodies give more detail when cropping? Yes, if they have a higher pixel density than the full frame camera. You also need to accommodate the anti-aliasing filter. APS-C bodies that do have an anti-aliasing filter might not beat full frame bodies that don't have and anti-aliasing filter. Let's wrap this up. First, I wanna say, just love the one you're with. If you're using a full frame lens on your APS-C body and you like the results, great. You don't need to second guess yourself. Don't feel bad. What's most important is that you're happy with the results. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm here to help people who are making buying decisions make educated choices, not for people who've already made choices just to assess whether they were right or not. When possible, choose lenses that match your sensor size. If you have a full frame body, choose full frame lenses. If you have an APS-C body, choose APS-C lenses. Those lenses were designed for your sensor size and anything different is going to give you less than optimal results. It seems obvious, but there's a lot of debate about this on the internet. For wildlife, you need to consider the cropped megapixels because you're going to be cropping a lot. If if you're one of the many people who don't have any plans to ever buy a full frame camera, consider Fuji. Fuji makes the X mount system, which is APS C only. Every other camera manufacturer used APS C as a stepping stone to get people to buy their full frame cameras. The camera makers seem to reason that any serious buyers of Sony, Canon, or Nikon bodies would inevitably buy a full frame camera. Thus, they made all their really good glass full frame only. The exception to that is the Fuji X mount. There is no upgrade path to full frame from APS-C and thus Fuji made a lot of professional glass in the APS-C format. And that's one of the reasons I so widely recommend the amazing Fuji X-T3 or the other Fuji lenses. You can get some amazing glass. Finally, if you're using an APS-C body with full frame lenses, maybe it's time to upgrade your body so you can take full advantage of those lenses. Hopefully I've shown you that the difference can be pretty dramatic in just sharpness, but the sharpness differences are really dwarfed by other benefits such as increased background blur and better low light performance. For more information about that, circle back to that sdp.io slash crop link where I talk more about all the effects of different sensor sizes. Finally, I'd like to show you this really old slide that I had from my previous slide deck that just plugs our books. We have books on Lightroom, Photoshop, a photography buying guide, as well as, of course, stunning digital photography, the number one photography book in the world with more than 2000 reviews on Amazon. Amazon, you can check it out there or visit our store at sdp.io slash store. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear your own experiences. I'd like to hear why you're using different combinations of APS-C bodies and full frame lenses and vice versa, what you've gotten good results with and what you've thought if you did upgrade to a different configuration. If you just straight out think I'm wrong, don't get emotional about it. I am 
willing to acknowledge any errors. And in fact, you'll see an updated list of corrections in the description or the pinned comment of any of our videos. None of it is a personal attack on you. I'm saying all this because the previous video got people really wildly emotional and it seems kind of unjustified to me because we're just talking about cameras. They're tools, right? Anyway, have fun with it. Give us a subscribe for more reviews, tutorials, and nerdy videos like this. And I'd appreciate a like. Thanks.